today is foraging day and a lot of you know that I am very interested in that and have been reading up on it and trying to learn things. So this is the first time I actually get to be doing it with somebody who knows what they're doing and identify things. Vicki knows how to do that kind of stuff. So there is a foraging trail that she goes and gathers things. So I am very excited about it and I'm excited for you to come along with me. So basically when I forage, I kind of like looking to see what stands out, what's a brighter green, what's a lighter green. And I guarantee you, if something stands out to you, it'll be a medicine. And all you gotta do is take your phone, take a picture of it. If you have no reception, check it out later, but find out the name and then right away, go into your research and say, whatever, let's say common self heals benefits. And it will tell you what it's beneficial for. Sometimes you need to do more research to find out if you're drying it or uh, tincturing it, but it's endless. Like really, if you start to kind of look down instead of looking this way, so many things will speak to you. And usually when they speak to you, because they're letting you know. <laughs> I'm good medicine. for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <cool. laughs> so you just like pay attention to like what kind of stands out. There's just so much out there. Like, let's see what we can find. Hmm. Now, don't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do is just go to my camera and then I'm gonna wait for the identification. And that's a yellow archangel, dead nettles. So what I would do is- that... So is this an app that shows you? Like, yeah, okay. it's oh. called um, Picture This. Now it doesn't give you information about the herb. It gives you the it just, name of the thing. Yeah. And all you need is the name because really you got to do your own research anyways. And knowledge is power. And then cool. you kind of learn when to. So like it's different to take this and go, oh, that's pretty. I'm going to take it. It's got to be something. But maybe I took it too early or maybe I should have waited another week. So it, it really is worth doing the investment in like, what is that? Mm -hmm. Yellow Archangel. There's a whole little field of them. <laughs> one foot away. <laughs> So if you look here, I just Googled the name, Yellow Archangel, um, the herb, and I put benefits. And right away comes, helps and energizes, fights against inflammation, works as a diuretic, and stimulates digestion. That field right there. Wow. Of flowers. And so then if you research further, then you can know how when, to get those benefits from the plant in the way that you need to get it. Right. And when, so right. I mean, most things, you can dry them and make a tea. Okay. Or you can learn how to make a tincture. But the thing you want to research is when is the best time to forage it with the most nutrients. Sometimes you can get things right at the beginning. A lot of times you need to wait till they completely die and grab the bulb. But these, you can forage. Okay. But yeah, that's what it's yeah, for. All so you right. could like take some home. There you go, folks. You would take enough for maybe a few days. See how it yeah. feels. If you like it, come back more, right? See how I go, oh, oh, it's just burdock. But burdock grows a lot of places, but it, that is to a medicine. Huh. And again, you can well, use Well, and fresh. of course, dandelions. I, I oh, know like dandelions. even dandelions, yeah, the benefits of those. Yeah, I yeah, drink tea all the time from dandelions, yeah. All right. This is plantain. Okay. Anybody who is outdoors should know what this does. This stops, uh, stunts your bleeding. So if you ever have a cut, or a sting or a bite, um, it's something, you touch poison ivy, you would take a bunch of these leaves. If you have the means, bash it up in a plastic bag. You take that, that cloth and those leaves because you want the moisture and you would put it on the wound. You're out in the forest, you don't have that stuff. You chomp it, chew it, oh. and you chew the leaves to get the juices. I did it the other day when I cut myself with a can. I went to my yard, look how clean that cut, the, the, yeah. there's no scab, it dries clean. Plantain stops bleeding, bug bite burns. It's crazy. It grows everywhere. It's a weed, yep. but and usually there's little spoky things that come out, like okay. little yeah, like wiry, little, seedy yep. things. Mm -hmm. But it's too early right now. But right. the actual medicine is the leaf. <laughs> cool. And you right? can harvest it anytime. Or? Oh, anytime. Right. Yeah, okay. yeah. I actually, um, I'm in the process of doing like a tincture. Um, I have it dried, but the the best for the stunting of the blood, like when you have a cut, is when it's fresh. Mm -hmm. That's why I run out to the yard when I have a cut. <laughs> right? Nice. Yeah, plain things, nice saving, man. Oh, that's wild carrot. Oh, really? Yeah, well, so wild carrot will grow into a flower 
that looks like another poisonous plant. So it's very important to, to know identify. what you're, <laughs> it's very important to know what you're foraging. Now, the thing is, I mean, once you see the plant, it, it makes a big difference. The, the wild carrot will grow these little, I'm sure you'll see them in summer. They're like flat, little white flower heads. Um, and the whole thing is kind of flat. Now the poisonous one is ginormous, but they look very similar. And the only difference is wild carrot has a red dot in the middle. So it, you can't just go picking everything. Right. It's really important to your research, but there is all free medicine. So that's, this wild carrot will like fill the yard with all these beautiful white flowers. That is a medicine. And then also that medicine helps with hangover. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Hydration, cleaning the liver. Nice. Uh, yeah, so it's a good like detox <laughs> for sure. Comfrey. Now usually you can tell because it feels like super soft, almost like mullein. Comfy. So that, I would, I have two of those growing at home. I dug two up with the roots mm -hmm. and then put them in like a pot, a pot. So I will grow my own, they will flower, mm -hmm. but I'll forage the leaves. You can freeze them, you can dry them. What I will do is I will freeze them. And then when Terry has aches and pains, I'll make a polis out of it. And I kind of use like a cheesecloth. So I put them in a cheesecloth and I'll tie it over my handle of my kettle and I let my kettle boil and the steam from that activates the juices. And then literally you put it as a topical and that soaks through to his muscles and tendons and helps to heal. And again, natural. So that's really fast. I love, I love comfrey. I was searching for that for a long time till I found it. But it's, it's wild and everywhere. See the, edge the birds there? have found something. You what? <laughs> the birds have definitely found something there. Well, they live in the wall. Oh! It's like a sand. Watch yourself. Yep. Are they just eating bugs right now, maybe, or what? Um, I don't. Maybe. I don't, maybe. <laughs> um, this always. This happens a lot though in the spring, and they live in this wall, in the dirt wall. They're all like little nests. <laughs> yeah, like I see one maybe right here. <laughs> Very cool. This is Lake Ontario. Yes. Right. Toronto, so usually people? on a clear day, you can see straight across. Okay, yeah. So we're on the, that's Toronto, and we're on the other side. Niagara on the Lake. Niagara on the Lake. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. And we'll go walk this way because they kind of recreated this path because this is starting to fall. <laughs> yeah. As you stand closer to the edge. <laughs> like stuff will speak to you. Oh, that's a goldenrod. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a baby. So it's a little baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll grow into like big, 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 like tall grass. Okay. Big, beautiful yellow um, cluster of flowers kind of dripping, draping off. Okay. That is the antidote to allergies. People <gasps> think that causes. That's what I need. Yes. They think it causes allergies, but it's the and antidote. And you will put that as a tea or a tincture? Yeah, you can use fresh. You can use dry. You can make a tincture. Someone has like really bad allergies, I'd probably recommend a tincture. Explain maybe for people what the difference is between tincture a tincture and, uh, yeah, and So any. someone like me, I don't have, at the moment, mm -hmm. thank God, I don't have anything wrong with me. I don't have mm -hmm. any allergies, but there's also like vitamins in these plants and flowers. So I can take a tea randomly. Someone who has like a situation they want to take care of, you would be taking say a tea twice a day to have a benefit for a minimum of two weeks. Mm -hmm. If you have really bad allergies, like it affects everything, I would recommend a tincture. Mm. And then I would take once a day and it's literally like three drops under your tongue. Okay. And I do that for two weeks. And then you take a break, so you let your body kind of do its thing. It's a, like a natural way of balancing out the imbalance of the allergy. Okay. So tinctures are more problem. Teas are more... Uh, yeah, I, I like that. Uh, yeah, it'll help me good. And, it, and yeah. if not, it tastes good anyway. And there's other nutrients in it. Yeah, 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 yeah right. there's always... Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. I mean, I just, like, if, if anybody's on medication, that's <laughs> where you don't... You can't just... Oh, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You need right. to check with your doctor. Some of this stuff does what the medication does, and then imagine that. Always gonna do your research. So this here is false turkey tail. Now it looks like real turkey tail, the same shape, the same pattern, but the color is different. It's more beige and white rather than the like different color rings. So this is not a medicine, so it's easy to be mistaken, but the one you do want for turkey tail, hopefully we'll find, is like rainbowed. So this is just a false turkey so tail. That, yeah, and that's really good to point out. And that's why, like you said before, it's really important that you do your research, you mm -hmm. know what you're looking at, because there are all of these things that mimic maybe yeah. other things that could be good for you. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to be like afraid of it. Don't be afraid of, oh, I've got to check. They're, they're worth the investment right. to check it out. Just check out the benefits. Yeah. Um, 
don't, but we are kind of scared as in like all these mushrooms are bad. I wouldn't pick this up and eat it, you know? Yeah, so, nothing that I'm foraging in the moment would I ever eat no, in the no, moment. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 right. no, no. But it, it double is, check, double check. It is good to, to double right. check because there's a lot of things that do have look-alike. So it's just good to know, but it's fun. It's like an adventure. But that was turkey tail. Okay, but you can't really tell. Like you'd see the point. greens oh, yeah. in there and there's mm -hmm. purples, but this is been here too long. Put it back in the world. Yep, let it do something else you for something else. Yeah. But, it, but really, like as you slow down, though, you really realize. Dude, 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 literally, dude. every time I come, I'm like, oh, I didn't see what? that. What? I didn't see that. So this is the forest that we found the five pounds of chicken of the woods. That was a huge score. We made chicken burgers out of it, chicken fingers out what? of it. Would it be around now, do you think? Um, it, yeah, yeah, it's oh, I'd like to know what that looks to, like. I'd love to find it. It's bright and orange and looks like a seashell. And they're they're dense but they're like, like styrofoam, <laughs> but it tastes, tastes like, like chicken. chicken. <laughs> um, and the be the best time to forage it is um, uh, the brighter the orange it is. Okay. As it starts to die off, more bugs get inside them. It's still the nutrients, but it's like a hassle with all the little bugs. But I just slice it up like a chicken finger. I coat it with batter, deep fry it, and put it on a bun. It's amazing. It really does taste, and because it has a texture of chicken when it's cooked, free food. Yeah. That'd be cool. I got all my mullein down here by the water. Oh, that's nice. And mullein is also good for our lungs, right? That's what. Yeah, that... pneumonia. Um, it, if you have any kind of like respiratory issues, what it does is it gets rid of any extra phlegm and fluid from the lungs by literally making you kind of cough it up, but it comes up way easier. So if you're a smoker or you have pneumonia or anything like that pneumonia is, uh, when i find that i'm like excited uh, yeah i've just recently been buying tea that has it in it and it's exciting that if i identify it i can be oh, making yeah. tea yeah. oh yeah well there's a free tea right because right. it's pretty expensive actually this is where i got it from last year is this where it tends to grow like yeah in so like sandy soil -ish? like a gravelly uh loose ground okay uh, I mean, it does grow crazy on highways. Don't ever forage from right. like a highway. Yeah. And, and all this stuff, uh, suffice to say, is like you'd want to definitely wash it and everything because you're not sure what wild animals are peeing. No. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, you, yeah, you, yeah. I, I mean, if I it's mean, in your garden, if you're growing it for yourself, you know what's on Right. There. And that's one great thing is when I do find like an abundance of it, I'll take the root, repot it, let it do its thing. Also, I'm learning the growth of it. I'm watching right. the growth, um, but I forage the leaves. Mm -hmm. And when you pluck, they grow more. So the first year with mullein, it will grow into like a patch. The second year, it grows into like a big long candlestick, beautiful yellow flowers, and those turn into seeds, and those are what will reseed and start the new patch again. So the actual mullein itself will only grow two years, and then it will reseed. Oh. But yeah, in like areas like this, oh, this is a baby a mullein. Oh. It feels like a lamb's ear. Yeah, mullein high. This stuff is gold. This I love mullein. Like it's like thick. Yeah. And literally yeah, dry it up, put it in a tea or put it in wherever. But yeah, this is the baby mullein. So this is the first year. Aww. And then the second year, it will keep bushing, bushing, bushing like a little bush. And then the third year, it's no good. The third year, no, it will use those seeds. It will reseed, and this process will start again. Oh, good. Again. Okay, so the shoot is basically it going, I'm going to spread my seed. Yeah. I think we just stepped on that. No, we didn't. Really? It just was resting. It's like, what? I'm sunbathing. <laughs> yeah. Wait, where the heck? I can't. Oh, there. In my lens, I don't know where it is. Kind of looks like my van. It has the three dots. <laughs> <laughs> all I do, all I do yeah. when I want to take the root is I just kind of like dig loosen. around it. Mm -hmm. You try to loosen it up, but now I can repot this at home and let it do its thing. Wow. So you just be careful with it. Like if right. you're going to take you it, you want to take yeah. it respectfully and not damage it but maintain it and and leave some behind always for, yeah always always and yeah. always thank the universe for yeah. it right isn't that beautiful though yes i get excited when i get mullen yeah awesome there's your little foraging pack Done. <laughs> all right so i'm going to take a picture of the top of the mushroom the side of the mushroom whichever and then we're going to put done Let's see what it is oh so that's the type of mushroom, so I'll take that name and look for the benefits. Yeah. Look at them all, though. They all say caution, do not yeah, eat, da, yeah. da, Because no. there's enough people out yeah. there that... <laughs> oh, I can eat it. No. No, no, no. 
wood blue grass. So it's just a big piece of grass. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dude. You put a hat on? Yeah. He's like, I'm shading myself. So this thing? Yeah. So that is called Jack in the Pulpit. Oh, it caught a fly. Did it? <laughs> it did. Look, isn't that? Or is there a spider that caught a fly? Like, what is it? Oh, yeah. Is that a dead fly? A fly? <laughs> All yeah. right, so Jack in the pulpit. What do you so do, Jack? That is um, an antiseptic, oh. uh, an expectorant, and it is a stimulant. And, and so is it this use... thing too, like this thing that looks like a weird little J? Or this, so a this yeah. right here, Okay. Yeah. you would use the, um, the bulb. So you don't use the flower, you don't use the medicine, but you would use the bulb. Okay. You can also make an ointment out of it for like ringworm. But this is how you'd identify, like this is a this. real identifier. Yeah, yeah, that's what caught my attention. Like, oh, hang on a minute. Okay, yeah. So Jack in the Pulpit, two splits, and the bulb is the medicine. Interesting. Yeah. You can also make an ointment for it for like ringworm, um, abscess treatments, okay. topical. Mm. Lesser Catiline. It's applied directly to the skin for wounds and bleeding. <laughs> Shut up. Yep. Swollen joints, warts. Scratches, hemorrhoids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so don't eat that next one. Time, next time, I'll, I'll just like uh, sit on this while I'm going down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? <laughs> just your butt's just <laughs> on the patch. Oh my god! I really want to find those May apples. I think they're coming. Yes, they are <gasps> May apples. Okay, so first okay. year of May apple. Yeah, it looks if like you, a... Yeah, if you get down low, it looks like Smurf Village. Yeah, it does. Like all these little tents. So this is the first year of May apple. I actually feel like in a video that I had, I, I was like, oh, look, Smurf Billy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what that was. I was like, oh yeah, I'd definitely make a house under these. <laughs> right? Like, when you look at, like when you look above here too, right. you see like, it's like a little town underneath there. <laughs> so this is first year um, May apple. And the way I know that is there's no fruit underneath. But there's an actual fruit that grows from this. We'll find one. Okay. But right now, so this is the first year. So next year when it grows, they'll grow and they'll kind of split. In the middle of the split the comes leaf. the flower. The flower then turns into a fruit that tastes like Starburst. This looks mature. Yeah, it does. I'm not seeing fruit. I mean flowers. Hang on. Is there any split? Oh, mm -hmm. maybe we missed though. No, I know. No, no, no. They, they, I've got it on my alarm. They will be good for August when they do come through, but there's no splits. They're all singles. <laughs> or keep going. Oh, wait, there's a split. Yep. We got it. Right, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me get the so, into it. Here's your May yeah. apple underneath. See the split, the V? Yeah. So that will turn into a flower. No way. And then it will turn into these little, almost like a kiwi shape. A uh, green ball, okay. and then it's foraging time when they're yellow, if you get them before the squirrels. And so the, how big do they get? Like the size of like a plum or a kiwi. Okay. Um, they are more round than oval shaped, but like, um, yeah, like that big. And they'll come through like a bright green, uh -huh. and then they'll fade to like uh, almost like a, like a yellowy white, kind of like it fades into that kind of like uh -huh. a dull color. That's the time to pick it. And it's like July, August. Wow. See the difference though, like I'm paying attention now too, like the flourishment of the top. Yeah. Close to the baby side, right? Right. Isn't that cool? So these That's you can fruit. really tell. Yeah. Wow. Fun. I, get a too sometimes. I do too though. This is awesome. Yeah, he was good. So I want you to look for look in this forest. And just like breathe. But people always say you know, can you see the forest through the trees? And I've always been like, oh yeah, really take a minute, stop. Can you see the forest through the trees? Is your focus on the trees or can you, fo can you make it broader and see the forest? You have to stop, you have to be still, you have to look and look at the forest through the trees. Is it, do you think that's crazy? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's my thing and I, I just like, oh my God, I get it. I, I really get it. And it just, it makes me stop. Oh my gosh, you guys, what a great experience.
experience. I had such a fun time today. I've always wanted to do that and it was like a dream come true. And I will keep studying this stuff and I hope that it inspires you to look around you, see that forest through the trees and realize what a beautiful world we have that gives us all sorts of wonderful things if we can just find them and know what they are and study them. It is such a privilege. I hope you enjoyed coming along with us. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.